All right, I don't even know how to start this, but we are just going to jump right into it. Recently, I was on a YouTube dating show where myself and 99 other men were all competing for one girl. So if you haven't seen that video yet, there are a lot of spoilers coming, so you should probably watch that video first. I'm gonna link that in the description, and then you can come back over here, and I'm just gonna share how the whole experience was from my perspective. So if you've seen the video, then obviously you know that I won. Crazy as that seems, um, I did not expect that at all. I guess we'll just start at the beginning. So a year ago, I found this guy Eric's channel. Actually, the first video I ever watched was one of his dating videos. It was the video where he had this guy named Jack, and there were 50 girls that he had to narrow down to one. And in the intro, there was this really cute blonde girl. So obviously, I had to watch the video from there. Fast forward to this year, I now live in LA, and I saw that Eric posted an application to be in his dating video. I honestly did not even know if it was gonna work out. Next thing I know, I'm getting contacted by one of his producers, and they want me to be in the video. I know nothing at this point. All I know is I'm supposed to show up wearing a suit. So I drive out there. We have no clue who this girl is gonna be. But on the off chance that it was a certain someone, I decided to record a video on my drive over there. I'll show you now. Okay, I'm recording this now just in case on the like one in a million chance. I am so hoping that Megan is the girl that we're competing for. If it's Megan, I'm gonna be like 10 times more nervous because she seems incredible. So yeah, I really, really wanted it to be Megan. We didn't really know, but that was what I was hoping for. So we come up to the first scene and it's set up for a wedding. Right off the bat, now we know the theme of this video is that all of us are getting married. Who are we getting married to? We don't quite know yet. So they take all of us, put us all in these bleachers, and all of a sudden, a girl gets out of the car wearing a white wedding dress. I don't even know how I knew, but I could tell. Like, I knew who it was. I knew it was Megan. I got so much more nervous than I had been. I think when I went into the day, my goal was just to make it through the first round. But once I saw it was her, I was like, okay, you gotta try to win this thing. One by one, we have to walk down the aisle and introduce ourselves to Megan as she's there at the altar. And we're supposed to have a pickup line. How you doing? Then at this point, she had to cut down from 100 guys to 25. So by the time it was my turn, I think she hadn't even given out 10 yet. I felt good. I walked down, did my opening line, introduced myself. And next thing I knew, she said yes. I got a ring, she put it on my hand. So she gives out all 25 rings. The so next thing we know, we are all getting loaded up on this party bus. There's 25 guys, they are getting people set up with mics. I wasn't even mic'd. These guys did not think that I was gonna make it to the next round. They didn't think I was gonna be a prominent feature in the video. So I didn't even get a mic in the top 25. By the time that we made it to the next location, which was downtown LA, I realized that in order to take it up a notch, I should probably play her something original. So we get to this location and it is so much bigger of a production than I thought it was gonna be. They actually invited all the guys who got cut in the first round to be audience members for the talent show. So it's not a small intimate moment performing in front of a bunch of people. By the time it got to me, I think she had already put six or seven guys through. I am very nervous. It's finally time, the producer's grabbing me, telling me that it's my turn to go out on stage. I came up with what ended up being a brilliant idea. I decided to make it a little more intimate, and I went and sat pretty much right off of the front of the stage, sitting directly in front of Megan. But yeah, I kind of just wanted it to come across like it was a moment for me and her, um, instead of this big show that they were trying to put on. So I sit down, I start singing, and it was not good, guys. I don't know if it comes across that way in the video, but I know it did not sound great. I was so nervous, my voice is shaking, but I managed to fumble my way through this song. And when I finish, I look up and I kind of just freeze because I'd finished singing, like there was nothing else but for her to either hit yes or no. And next thing I know, she is slamming the green button. Um, I think she hit it probably like five or six times and no other guy got that. So I saw that and like got so excited. I was like pumping my fist, cheering. I was stunned. Honestly, I did not see it go going that way. Yeah, so I'm in the top 10, and at this point, like I said, we're down to 10 guys. So this is where it really starts to get fun. We're hanging out, they sent us back to the bus. I had my buddy Cody was with me. That was cool, just getting to hang out, until it wasn't cool getting to hang out with Cody. So Eric comes out and is talking to all of us. He asks us all to partner up. We walk in to this building,
building and see that it's set up half basketball court, table at half court where Megan and her best friends are sitting there, they're getting their reactions. And so we realize that we're gonna be playing each other one on one to see who goes through to the next round. So I saw this and my heart sank. I had a good feeling that I was probably gonna go home at this point. Um, and then all of a sudden it is my turn to play. You guys saw, it didn't go well. But yeah, so it's high energy. We're taking it to the ground, slamming into each other, just like exhausting ourselves. And then all of a sudden, Cody makes the first basket. So my coaches call me back over. I think I knew in my heart at this point that I wasn't gonna win that game. But Eric looks me dead in the eye and says, Lane, look over at Megan. And I, I didn't, cause I was still looking at him. He goes, no, look at her right now. So I, I look over, this is when Eric tells me, you're the front runner in this thing. You cannot lose this game, which didn't help. Okay, so I go back out there. I proceed to not score a single point the entire game. And the first thing that I do is I walk up to the table that Megan's sitting at and I just apologized. I, I think I said something along the lines of like, the only way that I wanted to go home today was if you sent me home. And I was just very like defeated at that point. But she looks at me and she says, you're not going home. And so in my mind, I was like, okay, at the very least, like I have to get someone my number so they can give it to her because I'm still going home, but maybe we can see if this works out after the video. So I'm walking off at this point, just wheezing, gas, coughing, and I sit down, I have a water, and I look at the floor, and there's just blood all over the floor. And my first reaction was that I had been coughing up blood because my lungs hurt so bad. But I'm looking around and then I realized that I had just ripped a chunk off of my big toe. So I'm bleeding all over this floor. There's a trail of blood coming from where I had been walking about as embarrassing as it could have gone for me. At that point, they let us know that they need all of us to line up and they're gonna do like a shot of the winners and the losers. Of course, I am on the loser side. And at this point, Eric says like, okay, Megan, it's time to say Say goodbye to these guys. I think I'll go home now. And they give us a chance to see if there's any like final words that we have. Maybe this didn't happen and I'm imagining it, but I truly remember holding my hand up to my ear and saying, call me. Because I really, I, I thought I was going. And next thing I know, Eric says that she can save one guy and I got the save. So we're back on the bus. At this point though, we're down to six and they got us dinner and they're finally like, okay, we're gonna get you all your bottle of tequila. So we're having a good time on the bus now. Everyone's just hanging out, talking, we have music playing and we show up at the next location and they put the six of us in this room. And all of a sudden a producer comes, calls out the first guy, they leave, are gone for 15 minutes and don't come back. But next thing I know, another guy's called, then another guy and nobody's coming back. So finally I was the fourth guy to go. So I walk through the door and the first thing that I see is Megan and her three friends are sitting down in these chairs and there's an open seat next to Megan. And then there is a big desk in the room and there's a man in a suit sitting on the other side of the desk. But yeah, so the guy in the suit stands up, says that he is an attorney for Eric, and asks me if I read the contract that I signed that morning. Obviously, I did not. So at this point, they let me know that there was a provision in the contract where if I made it to this point, Megan would get five minutes of access to my phone to look at whatever she wanted, um, which is insane. So she's digging through my phone, going through my DMs, asking if I had a family group chat. And it was really funny because she took a photo of all of us and sent it into my family group chat saying, met my future wife. And I didn't even get my phone back. So I wasn't able to see what they're saying. And it just, it was a fun process. And then she goes to my recently deleted photos. She has, she points the phone back at me because she needs my face to unlock it. I instantly do it because I'm just thinking to myself, there's nothing in my recently deleted. And two seconds later, she's pointing the phone back to me going, who's this? Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. I had been on a date about a week before going on the show. You know how when you go on a date and your friends want to see a photo of who you went on a date with. Usually, in most cases, you'd go to their social media and get a photo that way. Uh, this girl didn't have any social media, but she was a model. Pretty much just had a photo of a very attractive woman on my phone that I had to explain away. But yeah, it's kind of crazy. Um, I was definitely stressed a little bit. That was how the phone portion ended. I figured that some of the other guys had a lot more uh, juicy details on their phone, but I had no clue how it was gonna go. Okay, so we had all finished having Megan 
look through our phones for five minutes, and then that is when they let us know Megan was gonna be voiding out four of our contracts. So she had this little stamp and just slapped void, and that was it, you're done. And at this point, crazy, I'm in the final two, Eric runs back in, we're all celebrating. So they sent the other guys home and we walk outside and all of a sudden, Eric pulls up driving pretty much your classic wedding getaway vehicle. They put the three of us in the back seat with Megan in the middle. But honestly, this drive was so much fun. We pulled into our final destination, which was this like cliffside overlook. So we had this beautiful view, we had a two on one final date. I knew that the pressure was on just from all the time I'd spent with Julian that day. He's a great guy. Great guy. So I knew that she could pick either one of us. Going through this date and we know that she has them whispering into her ear. And so she's getting fed things throughout it. Questions to ask us. We're going through find out how many kids do you want? Uh, what's your perfect date look like? Just a bunch of questions that she is trying to figure out. So it gets down to it and they finally ask us say why you should win and then Julian will say why he thinks he should win. And I really don't remember what I said. I think I probably mentioned something about singing, but yeah, so we're, we both, I guess we both said why we thought it should be us. And then it came down to decision time. She just had to say who her final guy was. So you've already seen the video. So you know that it was me. Somehow, some way I ended up being the one out of the hundred guys that Megan chose. And it was our wedding day. So at this point, I did capitalize on the opportunity to kiss the bride. Then they put us in the back of an SUV and asked us where we wanted to go. But I think I will keep the rest of that to myself for now. So I think that pretty much wraps up the entire day packed with so many unexpected things. But yeah, if you wanna know what happens next for Megan and I, I don't, I mean, are we dating? Are we married? I guess. Go ahead and click subscribe, like this video, leave some comments. I don't know, maybe I will have Megan with me in the next video. But yeah, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you next time.